Okay, so you've got the latest Intel Core Ultra 7 265K or 265KF. And even though it's actually a very good performer out of the box already, you want to get even more performance out of it. And you've heard that overclocking may help you. Well, you're on the right channel. This is the right video. So welcome back at the Motion PSUs with this overclocking guide for LGA 1851. Little disclaimer is you will need a pretty good cooler for this overclocking to work because these CPUs are very power efficient out of the box but if we start pushing them they're gonna draw quite a bit more power. Also if you want to get maximum performance overclocking is not enough. You also need to tweak your RAM and to do a few other things. But no worries because I will have a dedicated video for that on the channel or if you're seeing this on the future it's gonna be already on my channel. If you don't have a very good cooler, it's better you undervolt. And for that, I already have the video out. It's over here, you can click on it. If you wanna just go ahead and get a bit of extra performance without increasing your temperature, without increasing your power consumption. Now, today's video is gonna be based on an MSI motherboard, but it's gonna work for every single motherboard out there. Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, Azrock, Biostar, it doesn't matter, every single one of them. The settings are gonna be slightly different, but I'm gonna try to tell you guys which one they are. One last thing, if the video is going to be helpful in the end, after the video ends, I want a like and a sub for you. Can you promise me that? If so, let's go in the BIOS. Let's start overclocking. So here we are in the BIOS for our overclocking tutorial. Now, the first thing we want to do, if you're thinking about overclocking, is going to be enabling your XMP, which is going to be completely unrelated from our actual overclocking. So let's go into advanced mode, which in my case it's F7. Let's go into the overclocking tab, which may be called different depending on your motherboard. It may be AI tuning, OC tuning, overclocking, OC, something along those lines, but it's going to be the same for everybody. So again, the first thing you want to do is just go all the way down until you find your memory frequency and enable your extreme memory profile, put it on profile one. Now this, very important for the performance of this platform, but you want to test it separately because maybe this is unstable. So you follow my tutorial, but your PC crashes and you think tutorial is trash but in reality, it's just unstable XMP. So enable this, save it, test it into Windows. Then if it's stable, come back. Let's move forward with the actual tutorial. First thing we want to do is just fully unlock the power limits. Again, you will need a good cooler to do this. If not, it's better you undervolt. I have a video on how to undervolt your CPU properly. It's going to be over here, and it's going to be probably better if you don't have a very good cooler. But if you have a very good cooler, enough with the disclaimers, just overclocking, okay? There's going to be a setting in your BIOS, which is basically the power limits. It's going to be called something different for every motherboard, but it's going to be set as Intel default setting in every single motherboard, so it's easy to recognize. In my case, it's called MSI Performance Preset. If you have an ASUS motherboard, it's called CPU Cooler Tuning. And now you want to just unlock this one and say yes to the disclaimer. And now, we want to move forward and we want to overclock separately our P core, our E cores, and our cache. Now, a realistic starting point is going to be 56 on the P core and 49 on the E cores. Now, we can do 50 on the E cores easily, as well as we can do probably 57 on the P cores, but we are starting a bit lower. Okay, I think it's better and I think it's going to pay later in terms of stability achieved. Okay, same thing for the ring. Now, the ring is not going to make a lot of difference actually in gaming, but I would set it to a conservative 41. Stock is 39, so again, not a big difference. At this point, we move forward to tune the voltages. So we go all the way down, and for our voltage settings, we will have unlocked different settings for the P cores, the E cores, etc. So for the P core, we want to go ahead and put an off override mode and our starting voltage, which I recommend you guys, is going to be 1.3. Now, if you prefer to start a bit higher, just be safe that it's going to work, start at 1.35 and work your way down. Again, since it's an overclocking tutorial and not one of my undervolting ones, you're going to have to do a lot more testing to get it stable. So 1.3 is going to work for most of you. But if you want to be safe, start at 1.35. The E-cores, just set 1.25, don't go higher. I think this is a good middle ground. You're going to be happy. And for the ring, just put it in override and 1.1 is going to be what you need. And those are what we start from. So at the end of the day, even though we have a lot of voltage curves, a lot of complicated things, this is still good old Intel overclocking. So we still do the same things, 
The tricky part is finding the baselines, which now I've just given you, okay? It's 1.3 for the P-core, 1.25 for the E-cores, and 1.1 for the ring. At this point, with those tied to 41 on the ring, 49 on the E-cores, and 36 on the P-cores, you just have to test it out and see where you can get. Now, I will tell you my maximum frequency is achieved properly, okay? So I managed to do 57 on the P-core, should make you very happy if you achieve this. Then 51 on the E chords, but I don't recommend you try it. I recommend you stick to 50 because of stability reasons. And now the E chords give you a lot of performance benefits. And then I guess 42 here, but I, I would really stick to 41 on the ring because the chance for instability is going to be a lot more uh, than your actual gain. So I would say 41 on the ring, 50 on the E chords and 57 on the P-cores is something you should be aiming for. And now to achieve that, again, if you are relatively lucky, 1.25 is going to be fine on the E-core, 1.1 is going to be for sure fine on the ring, maybe go all the way up to 1.15, don't go higher, personally, we don't do it daily. And then the P-core, it's very subjective, and this is where you're going to struggle the most, okay? Um, this architecture is pretty voltage sensitive, I wouldn't go a lot higher for daily usage. I would go maybe, if you have a very good cooler, 1.375 for daily. I wouldn't go higher, even though a lot of people I know are running 1.4, but I wouldn't do it. And uh, nothing, guys. The rest is in your hands. You need to test this out. Let me know how it goes. And if it goes well, maybe drop a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in another one of my videos. Again, I have undervolting videos, overclocking videos for a lot of different components. Bye-bye.